So th thank you all for being here today. It is our great pleasure here at Symbiosis to have our special guest speaker, Christine Esparza, to talk about scaling uh, software as a service operations. We believe that starting a business is hard, but scaling it is even harder. So we need always to have these kind of experts, uh, we to have this help from them, to listen to them, and to learn from them and how to be more efficient while scaling our, our company. So we will learn a little bit more about the, the whole process, um, how can we be more efficient doing so. So that's kind of a, a very, very important part. I will not say uh, more, uh, more things. I will lead uh, Christian uh, to, to talk about, about it. But before that, I would like to give a quick intro to our own company, Symbiosis, which is a marketplace uh, for connecting tech companies here in the U.S. with software agencies in, in countries like Mexico, Argentina, Colombia, that have available talent. The idea is that we want to connect all the high demand of software engineers that we have here in the States with all the infrastructure and resources that already exist in these uh, countries. Uh, we've been around for over two years now. We're part of the Capital Factor Accelerator here in Austin, Texas. And that has helped us a lot to start helping founders to grow their tech team on demand. So if you are looking to hire people, hire software developers, instead of looking for uh, other countries like uh, Ukraine or India, you can search, uh, source them for, for your same time zone. And people that are very fluent in English, they are used to work with the projects in the US. So if you're interested, uh, we will leave some information in the chat so you can reach out and, and talk about that. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Christine uh, Esparza. She's our guest, a special guest speaker today. And she's about to start talking about scaling uh, software as a service operations. I would like to give a, a quick intro about her. Um, she has a lot of experience in uh, helping build teams, develop operational efficiencies, and grow revenue at a large and mid-sized companies. So, Kristen, if you'd like to jump in and give a quick intro about yourself, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Omar and Eddie, and really everyone at the Symbiosis team for hosting this great event. I really am honored to be here today talking SaaS operations and how to align your operations to become a market differentiator. As Omar mentioned, I have 20 years of experience scaling um, different size companies and really helping build the infrastructure needed to support the growth. I also host a Scaling SaaS Operations podcast. I started that last year and I interview SaaS startup founders and other industry experts about this topic. Um, it's something that I'm very passionate about as you'll see today. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started. So for today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's the difference between growth and scale. Um, I'm gonna spend some time talking about the operational ecosystem, some execution strategies to support your operational plan, some key metrics that I think are important for you to measure, and then some key takeaways at the end of the presentation. And as Omar mentioned, we'll open it up for some questions. So on the topic of growth versus scale, growth really refers to an increase in revenue or resources and is usually associated with an increase in cost. Scaling on the other hand really refers to the ability to increase your revenue while increasing your efficiency. So to grow revenue and maintain a good cash flow, a company must have an infrastructure to support that growth. And as you're putting that infrastructure in place, it should not only focus on increasing efficiency, but also identifying the gaps that you have in the customer experience. And so in order to do that, you need to build a solid operational ecosystem. So when we think about that, really all of functions that support the revenue stream of your company. So depending on your size, those functions such as sales and marketing product, customer success, maybe a handful of people, or it could be more than a hundred people. When we talk about scaling operations, it's not just looking at one component such as creating a sales playbook or automating a, an email sequence. It's really looking at all of the functions plus the data, the leadership, the process, culture, and systems that support those functions, which are centered around this human experience. This is the operational ecosystem that's going to support the growth of your company. Early on in your journey, you may be only focusing on one or two of these functions. Typically that's product and sales. 
Um, but to really build this foundation and scale, you, you should focus on building the entire infrastructure to create this ecosystem. And it's never too early to develop a strategy or developing a culture that's focused on the customer and the employee, or even identifying those data and metrics. Because once you build this foundation, it's going to be a lot easier to support your company as it grows and changes. So when Kristen, put, yes. uh, I'm sorry, but one quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. For a first-time founder, what would you say that is the hardest function to develop? Mm -hmm. um, for a first-time founder, once they're past product market fit, um, I would say probably sales and really kind of understanding what the sales process should look like to support um, gaining customers. Um, marketing is probably in that mix as well. Um, but I think some of the challenges that, that early early founders and early companies face is how to involve all of these teams at the same time to support the growth. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, so when we put the customer at the center of this ecosystem, it really gives you the ability to identify the gaps in their experience. And as they're moving through the various functions of your company, um, you can start to identify those gaps. And that's where this infrastructure kind of comes in to support that. So when you're looking at all of your functions and the support of this infrastructure, does your product team have the visibility to su and support from your leadership team, for example, to develop the right features to increase your revenue? Does your customer success team communicate feedback to product sales and marketing? Is your sales team really able to have from lead to customer to a super fan of your company, from their perspective, are your teams really aligned and working together to deliver an exceptional experience? Mm -hmm. So along with the customer, I put the employee in the center of the ecosystem because your employees are the ones that are servicing and interacting with your customers. So it's really important to look at the, the employee engagement within your company. And you can't really create a positive and consistent customer experience without a focus on your employees. So as you grow, you're gonna to have to recognize that there's gonna be silos that form when you're adding more people or departments or locations. And you can break those silos down much easier if you start building this, this infrastructure, this ecosystem early on. Um, you know, as companies grow, they start to compartmentalize these functions and they really lose sight of the goal, which is adding value to your customers and employees. And when we look at the center of this ecosystem where the human interaction takes place between your employees and your customers, that's where I think you can become truly transformative and really differentiate yourself in your market. So it's not just providing great customer service or a great NPS score. It means that you are empowering your employees to really fill in those gaps and become obsessed with adding more value to your customers. So knowing what their pain points are, what are their happy points, that's really the center of operations. And once you master that, you are really transforming your employees into brand ambassadors and your customers into lifelong super fans. And that's the differentiator and what I believe will separate you as a market leader. And not to mention though, at the end of the day, we are in the business of experience. So if you can add more and more value to your customers and employees and meet their emotional needs, needs, that's really being transformative. And that's building the trust and ultimately increasing your revenue because you're solving for additional needs and problems. And by expanding the value you provide, that's going to differentiate you from your competitors. So Christine, one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. At the beginning, on the early days of a company, normally the founders are doing all the hirings, right? Like yep. it doesn't matter if you're technical or not, you're hiring the mm -hmm. CTO, you're hiring mm -hmm. the VP of engineering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as you, as to scale up, um, how do you uh, make like a standard for other people, your human resources guys, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to also follow those processes yeah. and actually hire the right people? Yeah, well, that's where you have to really take a look at all of these things in this ecosystem. You have to develop the tools and the processes, document them. What is your culture like? Have you identified your values? What is your, um, you know, kind of your growth plan? How are you going to attract the right employees to your company? Um, I think a lot of times early on, there's just really no process in place. And it's really just a mix of hodgepodge of doing things ad hoc 
but really sitting down and documenting this out and planning this out of how this should look is what's going to help you attract the right talent. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. So now that we've reviewed this operational ecosystem, you know, let's dive in a little bit um, around how to actually execute on this, this strategy. So the way I like to do that is through a SWOT analysis, but really the first step is to identify and understand the problem um, through this SWOT analysis. So that's really going to help you understand what advantages you have over your competitors, what are your gaps or things that your competitors are doing better, what are your growth opportunities, and what are some change factors that can threaten your company's position? And engaging your employees in this exercise will really empower them to find those creative and innovative ways of enhancing that customer experience that I've been talking about. And then you can really determine what to automate to reduce costs and what to focus on to improve the interactions between your employees and your customers. Many times, you know, Companies just jump in and try to fix problems, but they don't really solve for the reason behind those problems. And this kind of process will help you understand what the why is behind some of the things that you need to focus on. The SWOT analysis also helps you uncover areas where you may not be making um, your customers and your employees feel that you care about them. And you may have to do this several times because it will help you develop and prioritize an operational plan um, you may not be able to tackle all of this because there's going to be a lot that probably comes out of this, but you can start to create a roadmap. Um, I think the biggest key in executing, though, on your plan is to communicate it, get buy-in from your employees, and really have a growth mindset that's open to change. So now that we have kind of determined the SWOT analysis, let's take a look at some other ways to execute on your strategy. So this ecosystem is going to change. Um, using feedback as a tool to support that change is critical. And so when feedback is open among your customers, employees, your leadership teams, it's going to give you insight into the impact the changes are having on your company and your customers and your employees. So feedback can come from meaningful surveys and data, but really what's important is that you have a culture that's built on being open to feedback. And that means that you're really talking to your customers and your employees regularly. And some of the areas that I like to focus on to get you that type of feedback to make those key decisions are people, culture, systems, and processes. So do you have the right people in the right roles? Are you developing new leaders? Is your culture diverse and open to innovation and new ideas? Do you have the right systems in place to measure success? Are they talking to one another? Sometimes the systems aren't doing that um, to give you a real holistic view of what your company is doing. And are you automating processes that'll free up some time for your employees to engage more with your customers? So these are just some areas that you can focus on. I think feedback is so important because it gives you a checkpoint of where you are in executing on your operational plan. And at the same time, it's gonna help you pivot to meet the needs of your customers and your employees. Okay, <clears throat> and do you recommend any tools for getting this feedback from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are several tools that are out there. Um, I can, you know, provide a list after, but you know, more and more I see that companies are, um, doing that, one of the, the companies I can think of is UserSnap, and they're very involved in getting feedback. They're actually really, you know, leading the change and helping SaaS companies develop the, the mechanisms and the right questions to ask to get this feedback. That's one of them. Great. Okay. All right. So now we have our operational plan. We've done our SWOT analysis. We're getting feedback. What I do want to touch on is some of the key metrics. Um, and, you know, these are not all of the metrics that you should measure, but I did want to highlight the ones I think that will help you can measure the scalability of your operations. Being data driven is so important to give you a good view into your company. And um, establishing these metrics and agreeing to them early on is going to provide you that foundation to make the right decisions, everything from hiring or adding more products and features. So it's really important to be data driven. 
So LTV is really going to tell you the estimated gross margin dollars that are going to be generated over the lifetime of your customer. So as customers are purch purchasing more products or services from you, or you're increasing your pricing, this number is going to increase. And as you identify those gaps in the customer experience, you can figure out how to add more value to them because it's gonna increase the LTV. CAC is gonna tell you how much it costs to acquire a new customer. So if you do have, in addition to sales and marketing costs, if you have in implementation or onboarding costs, they should be included in CAC. And all of those efficiencies you are creating by aligning your people and your processes and systems impact this number. So scaling operations is really finding ways to lower your customer acquisition costs. And when you look at the ratio between LTV and CAC, the lower that is, that means it's more expensive to acquire a new customer relative to the margin the customer will generate. So when you're looking at scaling and you're looking at driving efficiencies, you wanna maintain those costs um, across the board regardless of the size of your customer. And then also on the flip side, you wanna see how much does it really cost you maybe for customers that are not spending as much. So there's just different ways of taking a look at what the impact of scaling is doing to your margins. And churn rate is important because it's going to give you visibility into how many customers are canceling subscriptions. And this number is really important because it will help you understand what those gaps are. Talking to them and getting that feedback that I mentioned is so important because you wanna understand why they're not renewing. And that's gonna give you some valuable insight into how to kind of fix those gaps. And it is, it is amazing, it is awesome that you mentioned these metrics, uh, Christine, because uh, right now we are raising some funding uh, with angel investors and even that we're early stage at this moment, they are all asking for these metrics, you know, like yep. your yep. customer acquisition costs. So it's something that you keep doing during the whole life of your company, right? No, no, not mm -hmm. only when yes. you're scaling, but in the, during the beginning and also afterwards. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're key metrics mm -hmm. <laughs> with all the work. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, and you, you bring up a good point because if you are looking for investors, they are absolutely going to be looking at these numbers and they should start from the beginning and early on, you may not have them, mm -hmm. but they should be on your, your dashboard on some type of plan that you do intend to measure them. Um, because I know that investors will, you know, they're going to look at the scalability of your company and how much they actually have to invest to build the infrastructure to scale. And if you already have that in place, you're more valuable to an investor. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay. All right, so I've covered these key metrics. So I just want to spend some time just reviewing some key takeaways. And uh, just want to highlight here that having a product that solves a problem for your customer and truly making the customer feel that you understand them is going to differentiate you. Um, there's no one size fits all approach but really focusing on building your operations and your ecosystem through the lens of both your customer and the employee, that's going to be important to build a solid foundation to scale your company. When you start early by developing this infrastructure, you're going to have this solid plan with the data and the targets, and that's gonna help you iterate through your infrastructure. As I mentioned, this is gonna change, but when you have this foundation, you're gonna be able to iterate through that process. You're gonna be able to identify those opportunities through your SWOT analysis and really help to optimize that customer employee experience. As you begin to build your solid foundation that's centered around the customer and the employee experience, and you're seeking feedback, you're going to be able to foresee um, areas where you can make a greater impact and add more value to your customer and to your employees. So being proactive is something that's going to be re a result of going through this process. And you know, as you're growing and adding more people to your teams, make sure that you're really renewing your dedication to those values and strategy. As you mentioned, Omar, just, you know, that whole onboarding process and attracting talent, it's going to be very important for you early on to define your values and strategy and really communicating and living those values. So you keep employee engagement high, you can retain employees and attract um, the best talent to your organization. And when I talk about using human talent wisely, this is where you really need to determine what processes should be automated 
Mm -hmm. versus what are some of the areas where you want your employees to actually interact with your customers. So that's when you, when you look at things like email sequences, you know, that will help automate something that, you know, doesn't need to be done manually, but it also improve on the quality and give you the data to make better decisions. And finally, just focus on the mindset. As I said, your culture, your people, your processes and operations are going to be very different when you're going from a team of five to a hundred to a thousand, you know, thinking strategically and really identifying the gaps in the customer experience uh, to support the growth of your company by scaling is really gonna propel you to, to achieve that next milestone. That's great. That's great, Christine. It was very, very interesting. It was super uh, useful. Uh, I would like to know what kind of services did you provide with your company mm -hmm. and at what mm -hmm. stage uh, do you recommend your people mm -hmm. to reach out to you and learn more mm -hmm. about it? Mm -hmm. So I help companies kind of start to build this infrastructure and taking a look at the different areas in this ecosystem that I've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and it should probably happen after product market fit. Usually, you know, it's around like 5 million ARR is when I think there is a need to start bringing in this type of infrastructure because otherwise you're still iterating through your, pro your product and you're trying to find your, <clears throat> excuse me, ideal customer. Mm -hmm. So probably around that markers when um, you would want to engage with someone like me to help you build this out. Okay, great, great. So, well, we're just going to move to the Q&A section. Yeah. Uh, to Q and A part of this presentation, we do have three questions already in the Q and A chat. I don't know, Christine, if you're able to access it, if you'd like to re read it out loud and, and answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the Q and A, I see Dan asked if you charge the customer for implementation fees. Would you include those? Yes. Yes. Your your total your CAC should include all your customer acquisition costs, so sales, marketing, and implementation fees. Um, Adele asks when to start the top down sales operations versus organic. That's an interesting question because part of scaling is really to kind of balance growth and how much you scale. Um, and top down, I would say that needs to probably come around when you're at the product market fit stage because now you can have your sales team there because remember early on the founder is the salesperson. And so after, you know, you want to kind of move away from that and hiring people that can, you know, take over that type of responsibility. So I would say after you have product market fit. Uh, Jennifer asked if this presentation will be available. Yes, I will send it to Omar and Eddie and they will um, send it out to everyone that's registered. Uh, Chris asked, how can founders consider scaling up product development in tandem with sales and marketing? That's a good question, Chris, because, you know, early on, those shops can tend to be very small and, you know, really kind of looking at, you know, how can we manage that backlog better? They may not have that expertise, so there may be some consideration there, Chris, of outsourcing some of that. Um, Karen said, love this presentation. Thank you. Well, I'm guessing this is SaaS focused. It seems as though it's applicable to business companies in general. Yes, I, yes, Karen, they are. The only part that are specific to SaaS is when I talk about the subscription model, because one of the things that investors really what attract investors to SaaS companies is their repeatable revenue that's over time, but absolutely the same ecosystem, aligning those teams, really looking at that human experience absolutely applies to all companies and Perfect. is there and anything uh, in the chat that i missed okay we do have another question for adele top three product oh, market fit top three product kpis ah oh. um to begin scaling well you want to make sure that you early on okay so let me talk a little bit about this early on you're doing a lot of things manually and that's okay you should you should do things manually. You don't want to start scaling until you're at a point, and this depends, I don't know if there's a KPI that kind of determines that, but you don't want to start scaling or automating until you are at a point where you cannot handle the growth that you're having. And that may be a little bit too late. So as you're projecting your growth, um, you want to be able to be prepared to take on more. So I would ask a few questions though, when you're at that level. And that is, if you signed up 100 new customers, are you able to handle that? Are you 
prepared to scale to be able to pump through 100 customers through your organization? You know, things like that. Like, are you prepared from a infrastructure perspective to be able to take on that type of growth? So I hope that answered your question, Adele. Great, uh, great, Christine. And I'm seeing that also in the chat, we mm -hmm. do have a couple of questions uh, here. Uh, I believe that Hector also mm -hmm. may have another question. Oh, I see that. Yeah. The ratio of customers, per, let's say customer success or account managers, would you suggest? I don't know if there's an exact ratio. I think it depends on how much of how much how much is your your CAC. What is your spend to retain your customers? So, if you have you know ten customers that are spending a thousand dollars a month, right? Can one person handle that? I would look at I would look at really kind of how much time is being sent spent on each of those customers and then maybe breaking it down, down that way. You may also, Hector, want to tier your customers. So, you know, are, you know, if you tier your larger customers that are spending X amount, they may get a little bit more attention, whereas the ones that are spending a little bit less, could you then kind of work on automating some of that support or using the product um, to support them, you know, with chatbots and things like that. So I would take a look at how much you're spending now and, and where they are in the total LTV. Awesome. So we do have also another question in the normal mm -hmm. chat from Tim Murphy. Uh, what are some of the gotchas that happen when automation mm -hmm. of work in a specific jobs, like frontline mm -hmm. jobs, is viewed from a people and culture mm -hmm. perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good question, Tim, because I think in general, when you develop tools or automation, but your employees don't really understand how do they fit into the overall strategy of the company, that makes it a little bit difficult. So I would really focus on automating the things that you know a computer can do and really using your human talent to engage with your customers. And you, when you do that SWOT analysis and when you engage your employees in that, those are the things that you're going to uncover because, you know, people want to, you know, ha know that they're making a valuable impact on the company and on the growth of the company. And, you know, automating some of the things that are very manual or tedious may help them kind of grow themselves and grow their, grow them professionally as well and help them kind of add value to other parts of the organization. Okay, great. And we have another question, the Q&A chat. Mm -hmm. um, do you, from Adele, do you add on the potential sales losses due to free options, free trials on the CAC, or the part of the onboarding process? I would look at both numbers, Adele. I would add the loss on the free option and then also not add that and see what the difference is. Cool, got it. So I believe that if there are no uh, any more questions, uh, Christine, do you have any information so people can reach out to you? Uh, maybe yep. so, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I will um, send this presentation to Omar and Eddie, and they'll share it with everyone that's registered. You can get in touch with me. Here's my information. I'm always happy to get on the phone talk to you about some of the challenges that you're facing. And if there's anything that I can do, please reach out. You can follow me on social media here. Um, and um, I also, like I mentioned, have a podcast so you can listen in. I would love to hear your feedback and really want to um, thank everybody for joining, for registering. Thank you again, Omar and Eddie and the whole Symbiosis team for putting this together. This is really a topic that I'm passionate about. So I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to really share my, my experience with you. We appreciate your time, Christine. It was great. And we will also, we have also recorded this presentation. So we will share uh, this video with everyone uh, from the, all the attendees and also to be sharing the presentation as Christine mentioned. It was a great honor to have you today. It was, it is incredible. All this information, I believe that as company grow, it is important to learn how to scale and the differences between growing and scaling, right? Like you mentioned in the mm -hmm. first slide. So understanding that will help us to really be more efficient while doing the whole process. 
And please, if you have any, any other questions that you would like to ask directly to Christine, you can reach out to, to us with Eddie. Eddie is helping us on that, on that part. And we will make sure that Christine uh, receives those questions and we will be making that, that contact for you. So lastly, I would like to mention that uh, at Symbiosis, what we do as a, as a final uh, information, what we do is we, we have created a marketplace for connecting tech companies here in the US with software agencies across Latin America that have available talent. So you're not working with freelancers because normally their lack of commitment and accountability, you're working with agencies that already have their own employees and they will be able to assign them to your project. So if you're growing and, or you're scaling right now, it will be a great moment to reach out and source some talent from Latin America that it will help you to grow your tech team on demand. So thank you all for being here today. We will reach out to uh, everyone, uh, every uh, one of you um, so for sharing this information. And we'll be right here. If you have any questions uh, afterwards, we'll be more than glad to answer them. You have a good one. This thank you so safe. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.